I know it was hard for you when I left, but it wasn't my fault. I had to go, you understand that? And now, whose fault is it now? This is my home. I have roots here. You're living in the past, Patricia. Things have changed, snitch. I'm in charge now. Look, I'm only here for a week, then I'll be gone. And you think that changes things? Nobody's forgotten what you did to Neil. Ma. Hmm. Who's this? Marcus. Was he a panther? Yeah. It's Patricia. If you don't have plans, you should come by. I can talk to them if you want me to. They listen to me. I can take care of myself. I know they pumped 16 bullets into my best friend on his information. It wasn't Marcus. I'm not the enemy. You still got a friend. They have lost their way. He's putting guns in the hands of children. I don't give a damn who you used to be. Got my own plans. You ain't got to answer no questions. You hear that, pig? You don't got to tell them nothing. Some cats drove by. Shot out the back window. Kids walking around talking about the vanguard. That's not who we were. That's not what we did. Don't come back here. If you want to have a say about how things go around here, you have to stay. not the life you want to live. I want war for both of us. Anthony Mackie and Kerry Washington with music by The Roots. Night catches us. Sometimes you can't go on until you go back. Make sure, oh, my mic does work. That's good. Um, yeah, so um, it's very exciting to be here. Um, uh, I, um, this obviously is my film. It took us a very long time to make this movie. Um, and it was this great collaborative effort uh, with a lot of people, some here in Philly and uh, some elsewhere. Um, and you know, when I when I was asked to come here, I thought I would kind of come and talk about the film and and you know um, you know the characters in the world. But I think instead, I would like to um, kind of talk about what inspired me to make the film. Um, and you know, the film takes place obviously in '76, and um, it was the year that I came to this country from Jamaica, where I was born. And um, we, my, it, I came with my mom, and, um, and then a year later my brother came. And we lived in this house in Maryland with my mom's really good friend, who she had actually been her nanny for a bunch of years earlier. And she has a daughter, maybe we're five years apart or something. And, um, and um, we kind of all lived in this house on New Hampshire Avenue. And um, my mom's friend's name was Carol Lawson. And she passed away just at the beginning of our prep last summer when we were shooting this film. And in many ways, she is the great inspiration for this movie. Um, she's not an extraordinary person at all. I'd like to think that this film is actually about sort of really, you know, sort of unextraordinary people who are, you know, kind of struggling in their regular kind of day to day lives. And in many ways, Carol was the same, except that. Um, she had this sort of brief moment in her life that I think in many ways uh, I would say kind of shifted the way that she thought about um, the government, the way she thought about the country. She was deeply nationalistic. Um, and yet this moment I think really sort of shifted her belief. And, and um, so I wanted to tell that story. And, and I'll, I'll kind of preface a little bit by saying that I think that the, the thing that sort of led me beyond Carol's story to kind of uh, write this film um, 
was that I'm really interested in the progression in a way from the civil rights movement into the black power movement. I think that there's something extremely uh, romantic about it. It's obviously steeped in, in great adversaries and, and tragedy, and, and but there's a certain kind of romantic sort of a, a sense, I think, um, that I just always found really interesting. It's not my history. In many ways, I think I learned what it means to be an African American through Carol um, and through kind of absorbing her story and, and all the people in her, in her life. Um, but um, so so I'll, I'll just I'll just tell the story. Um, so in in 1965, um, Carol Lawson and six other students. Um, from Howard University, from the University of Maryland, I think maybe one from American University, they walked into the White House. Um, and uh, back then, you could just kind of go in on a tour, and there was no security. You didn't, you know, you didn't need a pass. You just kind of got on the line and went in, and that's what they did. And then they sat down inside and refused to leave. And I think, in a way, it had never happened before. It was a um, you know, I think that the White House staff didn't really know how to deal with it. And so they, they kind of kept them there for a bunch of hours. And then eventually, after a press conference where they tried to figure out how many Negroes there were and whether or not they were armed, they carted them out the back door. And Carol's mother is a woman named Arlene Lawson, who uh, is a middle class teacher from the Bronx uh, in New York. And the two really never saw eye to eye on pretty much anything. but. This event, I think, really uh, changed their relationship a lot. And this, uh, this slide actually behind me is, a, is sort of a summary of the events that Arlene started putting together. Uh, if you can imagine, in 1965, they get carted out. They, back then, you could get a $50 fine. That was the minimum for doing something like that. Or you could be sent to jail for six months. And they got the maximum, and they were sent to jail. And, and all these kids were like, 20, 21, um, and um, Arlene started this letter writing campaign with a, a lot of the other mothers and fathers of the kids who were going to jail. And it took about two years, from 65 to 67. In 67, they were finally sentenced to the six months. But during that time, she inspired all of these other people to come together um, and to write letters. This is a, a really, I loved her personal stationery. It's extremely beautiful. And um, this is just her scribblings. Just, you know, I think that, um, you know, the awful fate of the seven unselfish patriotic citizens of the USA who protested. Um, I think that the next slide is an editorial that one of the parents wrote to the New York Daily Post. Um, um, and, you know, these, these parents got together and they wrote all of these letters. They wrote letters to Jacob Javits. They wrote letters to, I think it's the, um, it was the parole, um, or sorry, uh, the, yes, I think it was the parole board in um, the Department of Justice. They wrote all these letters and they got back, I think the next couple of slides are, you know, they got back sort of very curt responses. We can't help you, you know, good luck. Um, but then finally, um, they, I think, got the attention of RFK. And um, there was one guy who was one of the seven students who I think actually wasn't a student, maybe. He worked for um, the government somehow, and he was going to be fired from his job. And RFK was able to come in, save his job, and eventually um, he helped the parents get their students, their uh, children out on work release. And I think it was about four or five months into their sentence. Um, and I think that the next couple of slides are, um, and there's a really, you know, I think a very lovely letter from JFK, or from RFK that's there that, um, that just essentially says, I've saved this one guy's job and I, your, student, your children are going to be okay. We've been able to get them out of um, jail. Um, so, you know, I think the thing is that, um, I will look here at my little cheat sheet. Um, um, I think that the reason why I found this story so interesting is that the Carol Lawson that I knew when I was growing up was such a different person. Um, I think that, in a way, that small kind of time that she had in jail, I think 
she was probably already kind of uh, making this sort of jump in a way from her belief in nonviolence to a much more aggressive stance on how to sort of politically change the world. And she left a lot of letters behind uh, that she had written to her mother. And, um, and the early ones are kind of very uh, optimistic. And, but the later ones are really kind of, I think, sort of speak in a way to the Carol that I knew as a child. And I wanted to read just a very small passage from one um, that she wrote to her mother. Um, she writes, I read where sit-ins in the mayor of Milwaukee's office destroyed and uh, vandalized his place. There were over 100 of them. Only five were arrested. They were protesting housing segregation laws or lack of fair ones. I laughed when I saw pictures of his office. My feelings about passive nonviolence are almost non-existent. When asked how I feel about nonviolence or if people should support it, I say, quote, support nonviolence or I'll kill you. Smile. <laughs> Perhaps if we had gone about past battles in that manner, so many good lives would not have been lost in vain. I think that um, I found the, and it sort of goes on pretty much in, the, in a similar vein. And you know, I think that I, I, I took some shots of, I, I inherited a lot of her library, and um, I took some shots of the books that, you know, again, I thought really defined the woman I knew as a child versus I think the 20 year old who went into the White House and eventually went to jail for the small period of time. And, um, and, you know, and I think the next maybe three or four slides are just sort of kind of covers of those books um, that really remind me a lot of her. Um, you know, I think that um, I tell the story because when I started um, trying to kind of piece together the characters for this film, especially the character that's played by Carrie Washington, which I think is very inspired by, um, by Carol. Um, and, but I think in many ways, all, the world in a way is sort of really inspired by her. I think I was, I, I really wanted to tell a story about ordinary people, um, and, but who are kind of shaped in a way by sort of these small blips of, of extraordinariness. And I, and I think that, um, Carol and, and in some ways her mother, I think were very interesting to me because I think that there's a, in that romantic thing that I sort of spoke about, I think there's something interesting about this generational shift that happens that I think you don't often see, especially when it comes to sort of, uh, you know, kind of African American cinema, to be able to kind of realize that there were these very sort of different uh, perspectives um, during civil rights, during black power, and you know, I, I'm often reminded of a story that Carol um, told me, actually I think her sister told me, uh, later she admitted to it, that when she was 16, she and her mother had a really nasty argument. And that uh, her mother slapped her across the face and Carol, in the heat of the moment, slapped her back. And they lived in the same house for two years and did not speak to each other. Um, and I thought that that was really interesting in a way that if you think that, um, that then they are thrown together in this moment and that her mother spends two years tirelessly working just to keep her kid out of jail for the six month period, that these two people who had such a volatile relationship that they were able to sort of you know, come together in this moment. I really, I loved that. I found it very inspiring and when I was putting together my characters, I used a piece of that as my backstory. Um, and you know, I think that um, Night Catches Us is a film, I hope, that can show the, um, the great complexity, in a way, of what people might have gone through during that time and, and during the waning days um, of those movements. And I, I think that I really, um, I wanted to be able to make a movie that looked at simple, small moments that kind of fall through the cracks in a way. They're not extraordinary. Six months is not a long time. Um, you know, she was 21, she went on, she became a lawyer, she worked at the House of Ruth, she dedicated her life to her community. But I loved in a way that this thing shifted the way she looked at the world and that, you know, there was a great complexity to this woman even though, you know, she kind of lived this very kind of simple, ordinary life. And I think that that is very much the essence of this film. So um, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>